February 25, 2012, Ron Paul's first campaign appearance in the state of Oklahoma. It's got about an hour and a half till he's supposed to be here speaking, and we're already filling up with thousands of people who are very eager to hear the man speak. You can feel the excitement in the air. It's, uh, this is a good day. A lot of people are going, going to remember this day for the rest of their lives, and I'm glad Ron Paul is coming here so we can see the support he enjoys here in the Sooner State, that there is a tradition of liberty and freedom in this state that people are trying to uphold and trying to honor, and they do support this man. I have seen this man wake up so many people. Mainstream Republicans are not coming on board that I know here in the state, so this is going to be a good day. I think it's just indicative of the, uh, the wave that's hitting this country when people see his message. We want to limit that scope and reach of government, not just at the federal level, not just at the state level, but at the, the county level and your local, your city and your local town. We want limited government. For God's sakes, leave us alone. There's great opportunity in times like this, and we need Ron Paul for president. That's right! We are supposed to be your public servants, not your masters. Yeah! You know, something that happens, people get elected up here, and a lot of them come up here with this idea that when they get elected, well, I'm one of the ones now that get to decide for everybody else what they can do and what they can't do. And that's something we fight against all the time. We're the ones that get to decide, and we're going to cram down everybody's throats what we think ought to be done. But it's not that way. And it will, it will be that way, and it won't change until you make it change. Honestly, what I really love about Ron Paul, he's the only true freedom fighter that I can see out of all the candidates, and he's the only free choice against Obama. And there's many, many of us, and uh, I see that as a great opportunity, and it gives me hope about actually turning things around in this country when I see all of these liberty-minded people out here. That's the best, best part of it for me. You know, I don't really care what the media say. As far as I'm concerned, he's got the kind of base behind him that if we will stick to it, if we will fight for it, why can't we get him up there? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's really, really great to be here today. And uh, it's great to be involved in something that's very important to you and obviously very important to me. And that is the cause of liberty. You know, the other night in the debate, they asked us to use one word, and I was so tempted because that's really the one word that is the best. The word is liberty. <laughs> that's what made the country great, and that's what we're losing, and that's why we're not so great anymore, and that's why there's a revolution going on. <laughs> But, but I'm sure glad the revolution has arrived in Oklahoma because it is spreading. It's an intellectual revolution, and it's not going to be stopped. And you know an idea whose time has come. It cannot be stopped by armies or any government. So, so we're really on a roll now uh, as far as presenting our case and actually doing very well in the uh, effort to accumulate delegates. You know, the name of the game. You know, sometimes they get confused on the voting and counting the votes, but so far right now they're admitting that we are in second place with delegate counts. I claim that most of the reason, if not all the reason, why we're in this political and economic mess is we have sent too many or have allowed too many to go to Washington who either didn't read or didn't understand and didn't take their oath of office seriously like they should. So, of course, in that same year they gave us the IRS and the, federal, and the income tax, they gave us that very onerous thing called the Federal Reserve that we need to abolish. And the Fed.
But with the introduction of the Federal Reserve, which is something that nations have done and dictators have done for thousands of years, debase the currency. The governments always want to control the money because they can debase the currency. At one time it was just clipping coins, at another time diluting the metal, at another time it started printing money. Today it's very sophisticated, they just use a computer, literally creating trillions of dollars with, without hardly any effort. And the Federal Reserve actually churned 50 trillion dollars during the bailout and they do it without adequate supervision by the Congress like the Congress totally ignores them and that is why short of getting rid of the Federal Reserve we absolutely have to get a full audit of the Federal Reserve what they're doing But history shows that once governments have uh, the power to create money, they do. And what does that mean? That means the government grows. And when the government grows, your liberties are undermined. And that means personal liberties are undermined, economic liberties are undermined. And nations that grow like that end up doing way too much overseas. They feel like they have this obligation, authority, and the power to police the world. And so when we have our revolution and when come to about, you'll know it's here when our troops come home. The other night I argued that they weren't listening to my moral and my constitutional arguments for not starting another war and bringing the troops home. But there's an economic argument that they must listen to because it's a powerful argument. It's great nations who overextend themselves overseas inevitably go bankrupt. And we're in the middle of the declaration of our bankruptcy now. And that is why there's such turmoils around the world because we have been issuing the, the universal currency, the reserve currency of the world. So we have to face up to that. There is a great test going on right now between those of us who believe in sound money and free markets and individual liberty, minding our own business, a sensible foreign policy, and who and those who believe we're supposed to be the policemen of the world and deficits don't matter and the welfare state will last forever. I believe we can win this argument and we'll win it soon. Wherever I go, the, the crowds come out and the people know, the people in this country know exactly what's going on. And in Washington, they put you down and they think that they have to take care of you from cradle to grave and all they're doing is giving you debt and a burden. I'll tell you where, uh, where they're not waking up. In Washington, they're still sound asleep. They don't hear from us yet, but that is our job, to hear from us and let them get the message what we need in this country, and that's more liberty. You know, one thing that inevitably occurs is government grows. You can't grow government. The government assumes this responsibility to improve our behavior. If they think the government can protect us from against ourselves, it inevitably leads to a dictatorship and control of everything we do. And I've had a lot of complaints. I think you all know that I'm not exactly a fan of the drug war. I think the... Uh, <laughs> The, fan, the drug war has cost us three or four trillion dollars in the last 40 to 50 years. And guess what? There's still a lot of bad drugs out there. There's a lot of addictions. I, I don't like the idea of saying drug addiction is a crime. It's, it should be treated as alcohol and treated, uh, treated as, as a disease. But uh, the bigger problem in this country when it's, it's misuse of drugs, believe it or not, it's, it's prescription drugs are a bigger problem than the illegal drugs. But the drug war has been used to undermine our civil liberties. There's been too many uh, SWAT teams busting into houses they shouldn't be busting into, too many people, innocent people dying, and it has been as an excuse to invade our privacy. And this is the reason that we have to look at that whole issue of who's supposed to protect us against ourselves. We teach our children about the dangers, uh, automobiles and fires and all the other things. We should have that responsibility as well. If I thought for a minute, though, that they had a perfect society and nobody was inclined to misuse drugs and do all the problems that come, you know, it'd be a little harder. But sort of like the economic argument, they don't create perfect economic conditions, but they don't create better moral moral behavior either. That comes from within, within the family and the community and the church, not from the federal government bearing down on us. The American people got attacked by the passage of that very onerous Patriot Act that needs repeal. I, 
I am convinced that if that bill had been called repeal the Fourth Amendment Act, it wouldn't have passed. <laughs> So when we get around to repealing it, we're not going to say that we're going to repeal the Patriot Act. We're going to say, restore the Fourth Amendment to this country. <laughs> it's sad, but our attack on our liberties, the foreign policy, the monetary policy, and the welfare state, tragically has been too much bipartisan. I'd like to say that the party that I'm running in is the savior and is going to produce it, but that isn't going to be the answer because our problems have been bipartisan. Too long. Matter of fact, sometimes the people say, well, Ron, you can't do it because you won't compromise. Well, there's been way too much compromise in Washington between the two parties coming together and spending the money and going into, going into these wars. So, but what has else has happened? The president assumes that he's a king. He's decided that by eating, because he's the commander in chief, that he has the authority under certain circumstances that he can assassinate an American citizen. And he's done it to prove this point. He's done it three times. And where has been the outcry? I hear it from the crowds. But just think, we've had how many debates? It depends on how you count. I think it's about 22 if you count every single one of them. That issue never comes up about uh, civil liberties, the protection of privacy, assassinations, all these things, totally ignored. They do not bring this up at all. Though, um, but also the, the federal, uh, the, the Congress hasn't done much good in stopping it. They don't uh, resist what the president does. Matter of fact, in December, they delivered the president to the president the National Defense Authorization Act. The president celebrated the new year, but January 1st, he signed the bill. And of course, that is the bill that gives the president explicit authority that he can use the U.S. military to violate posse comitatus to arrest American citizens. In, in secret, put away in, in secret prisons, denying an attorney, and kept indefinitely. That is not what America should be all about, and we need to change it. Now, freedom, freedom is a rather young idea. They accuse me, and I'm sure you've been accused of saying, oh, you just want to go back to the dark age, back to, the, back to this silly idea of having commodity money and having a gold standard and believing in the Constitution. That's all old stuff. But you know what is old stuff is tyranny. Yeah. Tyranny's old. Freedom is new. And, uh, and, and, and we've had this great experiment, but I, I get worried at times that it's slipping away. But uh, I'm encouraged, of course, now because so many people are, are concerned and they're, and they're fighting the fight. But freedom has only been around in the experiment. It, the evidence is so overwhelming. It even, I tell people, and I'm very sincere about that, if I had a choice of living in a free society where my life was my own, but I would be poor, I would accept that. But the, uh, but the great thing is, the freer society, that doesn't happen. You know, we, we, get, we get a twofer. We get our freedom and we get our prosperity. But what happened, I think, you know, as we got wealthier after the Industrial Revolution, uh, the, the material abundance was so, so immense that people were so pleased with it. That's what they concentrated on, and they uh, got the government involved in re helping to redistribute, and more people wanted more, and less people was, were concerned about the principles of liberty. But that's what's happening today. That's what the revolution is all about, is dealing with the principles of liberty, what made America great, and we will win this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron Paul 2012. Ron Paul 2012. Ron Paul 2012. Ron Paul 2012. Restore the Constitution.